Welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with our Dell 3880, which for 2021 was the cheapest brand new Dell I could get in like a traditional desktop form factor. This is your first visit to the channel. There is a playlist for this thing, which I will link right up there as well as down in the description so you can go get all caught up. The goal of the series is to take this guy from the cheapest one I could get all the way up to upgrading everything as we go. Today's mission is going to be to install this GeForce GT 1030 into that Dell. And this is basically also the cheapest graphics card I could buy, kind of. Right now this is summer of 2021 and graphics card prices are still insane. I paid 50% more used for this card than they were new when I bought this guy back in December. So in nine months, the video card market has doubled or in some cases tripled. So I've sort of adjusted my targets on things based on that. Also, many of you out there probably know more about video cards than I do. In fact, I would bet most of you that are here looking at this have already researched this market more than I likely ever will. That is because I am not a PC gamer, and if you want to go check out my tech channel, linked up there and down in the description, which is where content like this will be in the future, I have a video explaining why I'm not. So this is the first graphics card I've bought in 20 years. And I had really hoped to buy something a little bit more upmarket and kind of tax our power supply, which by the way, this guy has a 200 watt power supply in him right now. But the prices on those options are still just catastrophic. And keeping it with some of the theme of this being the cheapest thing I could do, I think it's going to be kind of fun to just try a cheap card. Then maybe in six or eight months, uh, if card prices continue to drop, maybe we'll revisit this later and try something like a GTX 1050 or whatever. We can try other options. Another thing that I think is kind of cool is that this card is passively cooled. If you don't know what that means, it means there is no cooling fan. This guy is just cooled with this big heat sink and that is it. So this card should be completely silent. And quite a few people have sent me questions asking me how loud the 3880 is and all that good stuff and I find it to be very quiet but I know it's sort of a thing on people's minds oddly MSI only considers it virtually silent which okay I can't imagine how it would make any noise but we'll find out if you are one of the rare people that actually knows less about modern video cards than I do, uh, there are a few things to keep in mind if you're kind of trying to shop the market. I'm not trying to advertise this particular card for any other reason than it's widely available. It's from a respected or at least well-known manufacturer. MSI has been around forever. The 1030 chipset was a factory option in the 3880 from Dell, so we shouldn't have any compatibility issues. And this guy should draw virtually no power. I think like 20 watts-ish. And I'm going to try and do like an ad hoc thing to verify that or try and, try and get an idea of how much power this card actually draws. But otherwise, I don't think it matters all that much which card you actually buy as long as you understand the constraints. The other thing about this card and about this PC is it's only going to accept low profile cards. So right there it says low pro profile bracket included. This card actually has the full height bracket installed on it right now. I'll just put that anywhere. So we are likely going to have to change out to this slot cover. So this guy will go in place of where this guy was. So we have a height constraint and we for sure have a power constraint. So with the stock power supply, I've heard reports of people using up to a GTX 1050 without problems. And when I say stock, I mean those people probably have the 230 or 250 watt power supplies, not the 200 like what I have. And to further slightly complicate things, not all GT 1030s are made the same. MSI actually sells this card in two different versions in what I believe to be the exact same box, like the cover art and everything is exactly the same, with different speeds of RAM. Once again, me not being a PC gaming expert, I can't get into all the nuts and bolts of why that would matter, except to say that I know that faster is pretty much always better. The card I've selected is the GDDR5 memory speed version of the card, and it's a 2 gigabyte card. There's a GDDR4 version of this card that retails for about 50% less money, and the way I'm reading the reviews, and they could be very dramatic, they could not be, uh, it also seems to be about 50% less performance. Maybe that's something else we could also test in the future once prices come way on down. But from the research I did, it was well worth it to get the GDDR5. The price difference, even with what I'm paying here as inflated prices, was like 40 bucks. It wasn't that much money. So now you know everything about these video cards that I do. So really, there's not a whole lot left here, but to get the thing slapped in, I think software installation should be pretty straightforward too. I think it should probably just find its own drivers and off to the races we're going to go. I've been asked many times to make these videos very step-by-step -step and very detailed, so if that's not your speed, there will be timestamps down in the description and down in the progress bar that you can go jump around if you'd like. Oh, 
And of course I will link this exact card down in the description for you so you don't get screwed up. That is not a guarantee that it will be in stock when you go to look or that it will be a sane price. But I can at least point you to exactly what this is should you decide you like this thing. The first thing I have to do before we get this thing dumped in there is I'm going to try and determine the actual load on the power supply right now. I don't really have an awesome way to do that, like coming out of the power supply. So what I'm going to do is just put my kilowatt on the power cord for it coming out of the wall. And I'm going to run some benchmark studies on this thing. So I'll make it work a little bit and I'm going to measure the wattage. Then we're going to do some similar things after I put the graphics card in it. And I'll see if I can at least determine a wattage delta. Some of the consumed power is going to be immediately lost in heat and things like that. But we should at least get an idea for what the power draw for this card actually is in reality. And if I really put this thing through the paces and it only draws like 100 watts, then clearly it's not putting out more than 100 watts. So we'll have some idea where we're at. Before I go on any further, I should probably explain a little bit about this if you don't know anything about wattage or power or anything else. And I'll just make it really simple. We cannot get more out of the power supply than what goes in. So if this says 200 at any time, then the power supply can't be making over 200. So right now this is actually a live measurement on the PC, just idling. 25 watts are what's going into it. It cannot, by laws of physics, be producing more than 25 out of the other side of the power supply. There'll be heat losses and all kinds of stuff like that that diminish that and just efficiency in general. I don't have any good equipment for testing that kind of thing, so we're just going to run like this. All right, so I've got everything up and running. You should be able to see the inset of the kilowatt itself in one of the corners of the screen. I have seen this thing go between uh, pretty much what you're seeing now, like 15-ish watts up to about 60, just sitting here trying to work its own thing out. It's worth mentioning that my 3880 still has a mechanical hard drive in it, an M2 SSD and a DVD-ROM in it. Not that we're using the DVD-ROM, but it's pretty well populated. So it's got a bunch of stuff in it. I think what we're going to do is over here on user benchmark, we're going to run all our benchmark tests again. It looks like there's a new version of it out now, so snagging that guy up. And this should uh, put it to work pretty well, and we'll see what we get on our power. Well, from a power consumption standpoint, it really just DGAF about that. I think it peaked up to maybe 75 watts once, and most of the time, not much anything. So, all right. Uh, let's try our NVIDIA demo again, just because. You know, kind of the same story as the other uh, benchmark. Like 50 watts max. Huh. All right, one last thing to try. Uh, GTA 5 has like a demo mode where it just kind of pans a camera over the city. And this thing runs it poorly. We'll see if that actually puts any real load to it. Uh, I think what I'm after is in settings. Shows what I know. I don't remember how to get to it. Oh, run benchmark tests. That's what I'll do. So we'll give this a shot and see if it'll sing for its supper at all. Wow, this is performing actually much better than it did before. Wait. So I would expect this thing to be loading the processor pretty heavily. I wonder if I can get a task manager and actually watch it. No, it goes full screen. Actually, this thing's running this a lot better than I remember. I must have turned the settings down since the first time I tried, maybe. But either way, we aren't putting any load on the power supply at all. 50 watts. See if there's any hysteresis here. Yeah, it's tracking the CPU. We just, we're just not getting the CPU usage up. All right, fine then. Let's put this thing to work trying to render a movie. And that should load the processor down 100%, no problem. And I think I'm also going to uh, drop it on the mechanical hard drive just to make it do that too. Let's see. There we go. Now we're getting some power. 83 watts. And you can see it's just peaked out. CPU performance 100%. RAM usage is three quarters, which kind of surprises me. Hard disk usage of zero is surprising as well. I'm sure this is getting way too long and way too boring for a lot of people. So I'm going to say absolutely no more than 100 watts power draw out of this thing as it is right now. My suspicion 
that I could probably get away with this crappy power supply, a 1050, and maybe even an i5 as well all at the same time, I think is about right. But we may never know because I can't afford to buy all of the things to see. So anyway, let's get our car dropped in and we'll come back to all this and we'll try again later. Alrighty, so the first thing we've got to do is remove our case side. There are two thumb screws on here. Mine were pretty tight getting out of the package. So they also have a Phillips head in them. Just crack them loose. And you should be able to use your fingers to finish the job. And there's a grab handle here we're just going to pull and then kind of just scoop it right off the side. And just to cover it now, there are tabs in the case side that engage windows in the case. So to put the case back together, you just align the tabs to the windows, something like so, push it back in, tighten your thumb screws down, and these are just thumb screws, they don't need to be ultra tight. And now that we're in, I'll own up to the first lie I told you guys. These are full height slot covers, so we shouldn't have to change over to that little miniature guy. I still don't know if we could support a full height card. I think maybe we can, but just to play it safe, I'm just going to stick with the low profile stuff until I know better. But where we're going to want to install our card is right here in this blue slot. That is our PCIe 16X slot. And Dell was nice enough to make this cover actually a pop-out. So we can just remove that. These you actually have to break out if you want. But to get that cover out, all we have to do is pull this tab that actually says pull right on it. And it's nice if it's color-coded blue. It tells you it goes with the blue thing too, I guess. Actually, all of the Dell attachment points are blue. But just pull. And that's going to hinge open, allegedly. Did a minute ago. There we go. And this slot cover is just going to fall right out of there. On my used MSI card here, it has a board edge connector installed on it that yours may or may not have. It was nice of the used seller to include that. But all we're going to want to do here is just line the slots in the card up with the slots in the slot. It's a lot of slot. And it is almost always easier to do this from the top down. So as I was saying, the connector has demarcations in it that we have to match up slots in the card with. So there's the slot that needs to line up with that hole. Should not be a big deal. Get her in here so that you can see I'm lined up on everything pretty nicely. All I should have to do now is push down. Sometimes you have to push these pretty firmly to get them to seat in. And of course you just want to push straight down. That one actually wasn't too bad. I did have to kind of grab this card slot and move it over to align it on that nubbins. And these are little raised features. They're not actually uh, screw bosses, I don't think. And then we should be able to just close our guy again, which doesn't want to latch. We'll have to look into that. Anyway, theory here, should be able to close our little guy and that should lock the card in. It's got little mating nubbins that'll grab the card and lock it down. I just need to see why that one isn't locking down. I think it wasn't locking down just because I'm being too much of a sissy with it. Just give it a good push. And there it goes and clicks. Yeah, I just wasn't pushing hard enough before. And now our video card is installified and ready to roll, I think. Pretty much the easiest mechanical installation ever. And for you completionists out there, to remove the card, there is a little blue tab down here on this connector that you have to lift to get it to come out. And then what I like to do is I'll just take a finger under the corner back here and I'll take another finger and get on the outside of it. You know, basically just kind of tuck a finger into an HDMI port a little bit. Release this guy, just try and lift it. Where in this case, I might be able to actually just grab the board or the heat sink and try and scooch it on out. But that's all there is to it. When I get it reinserted, you'll probably be able to watch that tab lock in. Yeah, I think you saw it drop. Well, that's how you pull it out. I'm going to put my side cover back on, get her all plumbed up, and turn on see what happens. So I have my capture device plugged directly into the graphics card now. I have not even plugged the power into this guy yet, but I am capturing out of the graphics card and with the optical camera here. So I'm gonna at least plug it in and see if it uh, electrocutes me. Nope, but it's doing the weird Dell. I start up for a second thing and then I don't. Okay, power it up. So far as to be expected. Windows even gonna notify me there's a new graphics card? Yeah, I think it's thinking it over. Maybe it isn't. Device manager. Display adapters? Hmm, it's probably not good either. Let's just run Windows Update and see if it'll do anything that way. Got a whole bunch of crap, which we'll need to install this anyway for performance benchmarking later. Let's go to MSI's webpage and see if we can just download some drivers for this thing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. 
Oh, Microsoft Store just didn't install the NVIDIA control panel. So it looks like we just maybe took it a minute. Let's launch it. Okay, we just needed to give the Microsoft Store a few minutes to do its thing apparently. Yeah, it knows it's there. Let's see if it's in our device manager now. Yep, neat. Okay, cool. Says it wants a restart, so I'm gonna let it do that. And once it's done with all its updates and all that crap, uh, we'll catch back up. Alrighty, so she's done all of her reboots and updates and all that stuff. And just to do a quick recap there, Windows did all the software installation itself. I did not have to do anything. I've been sitting here watching the wattage a little bit, and I would say on average it's up 5 watts across the board. It won't idle down to 15 watts anymore, but 20? Sure. And then it kind of jumps around up to 50-ish or whatever. So I think we're going to try something a little different this time. I'm going to start the GTA Performance demo. If I can find it again, while rendering a movie. That should put our heels into this thing and max out the things, I would think. Once again, I'm just going to dump it to the mechanical drive. All right, so she's rolling. GTA is still running in the background, but it's not doing anything yet. We're up at 95 watts. Let's flip back over to GTA. Let's go for our benchmark. Yup. What it's showing on screen, I don't know how it's capturing it either may say 50 or 60 fps but it is not displaying at that rate it's displaying at about one or two i can hear the cooling fan in the dell that's actually the first time i ever heard it get warm enough to kick in yeah once again it might be saying 60 it's more like two but i'm seeing 115 watts 121 same story sitting here in reality that's like one or two frames a second and it's peaking like 115 watts again 120. Let's see if I can really put my spurs in it here. Flip back over to Windows. Let's try and run this um, pendulum demo again. So now GTA is running in the background. We're compressing a movie and we're going to run this thing. It looks like I really can't coax more than, we'll say 120 watts out of it, max. That's the most it's wanting to do. All right, I'm going to call it. I'm going to say 125 watts max is the best we can do. Well, I think I saw 130 for a second. We're just gonna want to say 125. So in conclusion, I think with a GT 1030 anyway, this thing has plenty of power supply in it, especially with just running one mechanical hard disk and with an i3. I quite suspect that as long as I never moved up from a 1030, I could get away with an i7 on this 200 watt power supply. I really wanted to try that and push my luck and see what would happen, but nobody is asking for that upgrade and everybody wants to see a PSU upgrade. So I think we're gonna have to do power supply upgrades first and then maybe processor prices will fall and we can do some stuff out of order later on the broken tech channel. But for right now, we're gonna call it and say the 1030 is just fine with this power supply no matter what processor you have. That's my personal feeling on it. And if you got your processor that way from Dell, they automatically increased your power supply size as you went. So 1030 shouldn't be any big deal. I'm pretty willing to trust, and I was willing to trust it before, the people saying a GTX 1050 worked just fine for them, uh, based on what I'm seeing here. Now let's get on down to what everybody came to see, and let's get the games going. And for the games, my capture method isn't able to keep up with the games anyway. Certainly not if what I just saw from GTA a minute ago is actually true. So you are once again going to get the least professional camera angle on YouTube, and we're going to be pointing a camera at a monitor, which I hate doing, but that's what we got to do. Alrighty, so I think last time we started off with Fortnite, so that is what we're going to do again. As soon as it's updated. And one regular show later, we are back and ready to go, except I forgot to start our frame rate counter, so it's a good thing it didn't go before. Interestingly, you can see it now recognizes our video card. Let's get into it and see how she does. I'm going to have to remember how to turn the settings up, too, because I think I had them turned down. We're going to turn everything all the way up. Won't let me do that, apparently. We'll go with unlimited frame rate. Can I restart? And I'm going to leave the game and come back. So I'm back in, and it doesn't look like it changed or preserved a bunch of my settings. Yep. All righty. Here we go. So turning up those other settings 
appears to have slowed down the rest of my performance. But certainly acceptable. 60 FPS. It almost seems like his FPS limited to 60 now. Nope. Oh. Let's turn that up to full HD. Okay. Running right on 60. It's limiting itself for whatever reason. Jump on out. Yeah, I think you can see those changes in draw distance and everything are significantly different than with just the Intel graphics. All in all, this game played pretty well before, so... It's looking good! Alright, so this is probably the most boring thing on the planet to watch. It's like we got a dude up there we can go fight with, make things a little more interesting, maybe. There's a dude. Came out now. We're still running right on 60. I just glanced over my shoulder at the wattage. It's pulling 50 watts. So, no issues whatsoever. <clears throat> All right then. I think we learned what we wanted to know. 60 FPS, just rock solid. Uh, power usage is just fine. Let's go try Minecraft. We'll turn up all the settings there too. So that was the settings on this as maxed out as I can. I don't have a display that'll uh, handle any more than 1080. So 1080 at 60 FPS, I'm going to say that's awesome out of a entry level video card. Next up, let's try some Minecraft. Hopefully we won't. Yeah, I was just wondering if there'd be an update. Yeah, there is an update. Will it be another regular show until I get to play? Let's find out. Uh, what? Okay. Neat. Have I mentioned that I hate PC gaming? Fun fact, the only thing that this account is associated with is this game. Even this Windows installation isn't associated with that account, so annoying. Let's play Minecraft. Glancing over to wattage, we're up at 95. So we're fine. We will turn everything way up. All right, that seems like real high settings, so play our demo world. Okay, as far as I'm aware, those settings are completely maxed out. And we're running 45, 50 FPS. I can tell this looks a lot nicer than, just, than it did with just Intel graphics. Yeah, looks nice. I don't know if I screw around down here for too long if I'm going to die or... Yeah, I should have mentioned, I still don't know how to play these games. But just taking a look around the world, and I'll just pan kind of slowly for you guys. It looks really nice. It's running 25 FPS, which is completely playable. Uh, glancing over at the wattage, just while I'm being a monster with the mouse here. 60 watts. So, not really a big issue. So yeah, it looks like it's bobbling between 25 and 60, depends what you're doing. I'm not sure if it's a good or bad thing to be doing in the game, but I did it. 
But anyway, at a glance, that is Minecraft performance, and it is completely acceptable. I am really curious what GTA is going to do. I doubt I'll be able to just crank up the settings all the way, but I bet I can make it at least PS3 quality or better. Let's go find out. Let's, let's check out our settings. We probably want graphics. Okay. <laughs> uh, mostly I just want it to run full HD. That's full HD. Okay, so it's giving me this video RAM estimation here. And I'm going to take its advice, and I'm just going to use that as a balancing board. So it looks like it sort of automatically already sets this stuff. Is that true? I have no idea what half of these settings are. Okay. We're just going to run with it. Most of the stuff I see looks like it should be pretty good quality. I'm going to go ahead and run the benchmark again just for funsies. Yep. So I'm a bit curious to see if it's actually going to run the 60 FPS that it said it was on screen before when it very clearly wasn't. But I was also rendering in the background and doing other stuff. So I do believe that's probably 30 FPS. Kilowatts saying like 60 watts. I would say the quality is probably pretty close to PS4, maybe better. And that is definitely at least 30 FPS. Yeah, what you're seeing on camera is what it's doing in real life. So that that's really great. Special treat time. One of my subs has more or less an obsession with Valorant. So I will give it a shot. This is the last game I'm going to demo on this thing in this configuration, meaning in this case. So no amount of begging is going to get me to do another game. So we'll, uh, we'll throw the audience a bone. All right, so it looks like this is just a training level, and it's running at 250 Jesus. FPS. Jump and crawl your way to that gun over there. I'm not paying any attention to my instructions. 400 FPS. This particular sub was very upset. Control left to crouch. That they were going. That they were going to need a graphics. That they were going to need a graphics card to run this. And it. And it really doesn't look like it. And this is running. Two beat hell. Let me see if there are settings. Well, we have Full HD. I don't think it was FPS limited before. Let's crank all these on up to high. Yeah, okay. So with everything cranked to the moon, now it's, it looks like it's locked at 60 FPS. It's limiting itself. Out of charges. Flying drone, it says. Out of charges. Okay. So I've got everything cranked to the moon with like the cheapest video card you can buy, and this thing runs like glass. So, yeah. Not a problem for this game. I can't see you, but it 
will hear you. Walk slowly so it doesn't detect your footsteps. Then take it by surprise. Oh, nice job. Let's try out some different guns on these targets. Normally you'd have to think about which guns and abilities to spend your threads on. But for now, go wild. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yes. I don't know what you are, but I'm in love. Um, how does one exit this menu? Oh, escape, I guess. <laughs> oh, that reload. I guess they do. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way through this tutorial, and I'll come back when I can get into some actual gameplay. Okay, so I think we got our training mission over. Should be able to actually play now. Uh, glancing over at the kilowatt, by the way, I saw it peak up to like 70. This doesn't appear to be an issue. I don't know. Lock in what? Okay. So we are actually playing now. I have no idea what I'm doing. So it looks like I'm all the way dead. I can't respawn or anything. I don't know. Anyway, that's Valorant. It runs just fine on this card. I don't think it would require... I don't even know if it would require this card, to be honest. Um, that sub made it sound like it was the end of the world if you couldn't afford a graphics card. But with the settings cranked all the way up, this plays just fine. Looks like I can go back to the buy phase. But we're going to just go ahead and say that is good. I've tried it. It plays just fine. And we're going to move on to the rest of our usual benchmark tests. So uh, user bench, we'll try that NVIDIA demo again, and we'll see what's up. Alrighty, just to make sure everything's fair, I've restarted it. We'll check Windows updates again, because why not? Yeah. All good. Let's go ahead and run that NVIDIA demo, because we should now have the technology, you know, the G-Sync technology, I would imagine we actually have that now. Eh, saying about 30 FPS. Turn the spin way up. Yeah, not too bad. I wonder if these work now. I don't know. It's saying 40-ish FPS. I wonder... I wonder if we can run Afterburner and the NVIDIA demo and get both frame counters. We can, but for whatever reason, it's just taking a huge performance hit. Oh, now it's not as bad. All right. Eh. NVIDIA's saying 30. Yeah, they're, they're both pretty much in agreement with themselves. About 30 FPS. Looks pretty good. There's a little bit of tearing, but it's not too bad. Eh, pretty good. Let's try user bench again. And see what we get. I'm expecting the gaming performance to be significantly better whether or not it is. And just while it's running, I'm just watching the kilowatts still, and it's it's peaking up like 80 watts. So we I'm pretty confident in saying we have no power issues with this whatsoever. I didn't even realize this was a test before. I'm not sure if the previous version of this even had this in it, but it's like a little mini game.
All right, all done. <laughs> Our desktop score has come up to nuclear submarine now, which is cool. And we're not tree trunks anymore, we're surfboards. This PC is likely operated by a master technician. Or technical master? Yeah. No. So it's still, it's still saying the graphics card is the weak spot. Which I'm sure is true, but in reality is the guy sitting here playing the games, I'm really not seeing it. It seems okay. I'm not playing, you know, double A brand new releases, of course. <laughs> SSD is murdering it like I knew it would. If prices on things were normal for what for what I would have spent on this thing, it's doing an admirable job. For whatever reason, this seems to be performing well in this configuration. And we'll just kind of compare our user bench scores since I unboxed the thing until now. Uh, straight out of the box, gaming 3%, desktop 76%, work was 3%. RAM and SSD brought those up to 14, 86, and 14. And now we're at 22, 94, and 20. So really it looks like, according to this benchmark, what is helping the most is just offloading the RAM to the video card. Since now the video card has its own RAM, it's not sharing the 8 gigs with the rest of the system. That's probably where it's picking up the majority of this desktop improvement. My final test is going to be to once again render the first episode in this series, which I'm not expecting to see uh, much of a performance difference. I don't think the rendering package uses any uh, video card resources. So I don't think it uses the GPU at all, but we'll find out. Off to the races. And this will be a good opportunity to just kind of keep an eye on the wattage too. See if it creeps up any beyond what I've seen. I also don't think that's going to happen. But that may have been just very, very slightly quicker. I'm not sure. I can't remember if it was like 36 or 39. But it wasn't enough quicker to justify a GPU if this is your goal for one. You know, obviously it didn't make things worse, so we're good. So all in all, that went meh, exceedingly well. It's about the easiest hardware install you'll ever do. Simply just plug it in, let Windows find the drivers, and off you go. Uh, I bought this one secondhand, so it didn't come with any software or anything anyway, or a warranty. So is what it is in that case, which was just fine. Overall, I'm, just to be honest, fairly impressed with what this thing will do on its own without a graphics card at all. I would, didn't think it would play any games whatsoever. And you can refer back to my prior video in the playlist and see my thoughts on all that if you'd like. If this thing were still an $85 video card, in my mind, it's just kind of a no-brainer to, yeah, go ahead and put one in because it's only 85 bucks and you get so much more out of it. It was not long ago that these things were $275, $200, numbers like that. I don't think I would pay that for one of these. I think I would wait to mark it out. But it looks like we've kind of gotten over the hump and that we're cresting the prices. So if at whatever point in the future you run into this video, you have the budget for one of these and you want the performance that I illustrated in the video, I think it's a good buy at normal market pricing. If the market goes back to where it was, hey, you might be able to buy this one from me because I don't need to keep it if these things are going for like $300 again. I'm not that impressed by it, but it is definitely a good value option. So that is about all I've got for this one. The next video in the 3880 series is going to be power supplies three different ways. I try to do one of these videos one time a month. So if you have watched this video on release day, that means four more weeks before the next installment. But as always, I appreciate you stopping in to watch this installment, and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.